Okay, so I have Waylon on with me. This is the Serpent's Crossing. This is a little annex show, and the point of this is whatever we couldn't cover in our main Serpent sermons or anything that was left off. Um, anything that we didn't cover on the Sunday nights there, um, maybe be like a short, like one hour, 90 minute show just to go over a couple of things, review or just bring up some new things or questions or points that was missed in the main Serpent Sermon. Yeah, I didn't get to be there for that one. I kind of hurt my feelings, Well, you're here with me now. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I, saw, I see your channel there, but I've only watched um, some of your interviews. Um, I think I watched like two videos with um, with Daster on there. Uh, I'd have to check out the other ones. I go by the Sorcerer Armada Soul. Uh, I run the Black Tower YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of people uh, that watch my channel, they watch it for different things. Sometimes it's for the interviews I do. Uh, sometimes it's for uh, a list of videos on the Necronomicon that I do. I've uh, been a practitioner of that system for over 20 years, 24 years now. So it's been a while. And um, my, my personal favorite, something that I'm really trying to really go in depth on, and that's in the Sinister series that covers a lot of the techniques, practices, meanings, purposes, and the workings um, of the, uh, of, uh, the path of apotheosis and uh, Sinister style magic's the left-hand path. So, so, hello, welcome to each and every single one of you. <laughs> Appreciate you having me on, brother. No problem. So, Waylon, what, what got you into magic? What got you in, what made you want to get into these arts and sciences? Despair. I, uh, when I was coming up, uh, suffered from, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal, uh, stuff like that. I was uh, I had a rough childhood coming up, which I think everybody has a rough childhood. But uh, mine went internal instead of external. So instead of trying to destroy the world around me, I was destroying myself. I couldn't handle uh, the loss of loved ones very well. I couldn't. Uh, just, life was shit. Uh, growing up in uh, foster care, life is shit. Uh, but it was it was more or less it was a. Uh, Path of pain that introduced me uh, to the occult in general, uh, due to due to getting to a point of uh, a point of uh, being suicidal, uh, where I was ready to leave this leave this mortal coil, this earth, and uh, I uh, God never answered my fucking prayers. The devil seemed too abstract to really be paying me any attention. And so I just said a prayer to the universe and was like, look, if there's anything out there whatsoever, you know, I was like, you know, you know my pain, you know where I'm at, you know what I'm dealing with, you know, either either show me that there's more to this shit or, you know, fuck it. And that's not a point a lot of people like to talk about, that that, that kind of thing. And it, it's so taboo that they're like, you know, people that are like, oh, well, they, you know, such and such shouldn't have, you know, uh, shouldn't have, uh, you know, committed suicide, you know, it's kind of a taboo thing to talk about, you know, they're like, you know, oh, life is worth so much more, and yet, for whatever reason, we're so busy bashing one another and putting each other down that we wonder where this kind of psychosis comes from, and uh, as I grew in the occult, uh, in the occult practices and workings and dealing with stuff, I came to understand that we're just, uh, we're, we're play players, we really are, uh, matter of fact, my very first, uh, uh, name that I went by was Black Plague because it reminded me of the fact that all the all the poisons, all the toxins, all the destructiveness inside myself, how easy it was to spread it to others and to watch them and flood destroy their own world. And I took a conscious effort to control it, to transmute it, transform it, change it. And uh, that's kind of been a lifelong goal. And it's... Uh, I don't, I'm not trying to win a damn good guy's badge. There's no such fucking thing as a hero. If you're a hero, you're a hero to yourself, not to others. Uh, and if you're doing this shit for attention, you're in it for the wrong reason. Uh, you know, you need to be either, 
you either need to be the hero of your own story or you need to be the super villain of your own story. You need to find out which one you are, you know, because and a lot of people that disagree with me, they'll be like, oh, well, you need to be your own hero. It's like, no. Sometimes if you're in a low enough place inside yourself, you need to find that super villain, that, that super villain aspect of the psyche that sits there and says, I'm going to take all this pain and I'm going to destroy everything around me. But you need to be conscious about what you, you, you need to be realistic, honest, and truthful with yourself. If you're going to play the role of villain, you need to understand you're not really trying to destroy others, but what you're doing is you're trying to find an outlet for that destructive nature. And what are the things in your life or that you see around you that you know need to change? And then you have to, uh, you have to actually apply that force and that power to those things to change them. So I don't always agree that it's bad to be your own monster, your own villain. Sometimes you've got to be. And then sometimes you'll see people, uh, that are really down and it's not that they're looking for handouts or anything like that, but pain knows pain. Sorrow knows sorrow, loss knows loss. You know, if you've ever been in these places, you know what I'm talking about. And so you can sense it, feel it, know it in others. And if you, if it's something that you've grown and you've come out of, you know, you know, you know how much pressure to apply and so forth and so on, you know, and the idea is to, in the, in the term of being a plague spreader, uh, like in, you know, like when I would use the term, you know, the Black Plague 777 as a magical moniker, uh, I was, I was always aware that just because I was having a bad hair day, I could make somebody else think it just as bad or rough as mine. But it's all in the choosing of when you use it and if you use it. And so you use that exact same concept when you're working with others who are down. You know, do you pick this, do you pick this person up or is this a person seeking attention? But like I said, pain knows pain, loss knows loss, sorrow knows sorrow. If you, you can fit to this kind of truth in others. Some people you can help, and some people, honestly, you have to let them help themselves. If nothing changes if they themselves do not want to change. Sorry, man, I have a little wind, a little wind out of all time. That's okay. That's exactly, that's exactly what, what these interviews are, what I expect them to be like. You know, this isn't Dr. Phil. This is this is the goatee in scriptures. You know, I want I want the real shit. You know, not 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 no Dr. Phil occultism. Yeah, it's all feel good rainbows and rabbits, man. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah, that's that's certainly not how shit is. Yeah, the world can certainly be a fucking fucking toxic place. You got oh, um, yeah. Yeah. you know fucking energy extraction system most people are just living like a robotic existence of treadmill life they they, they get up and you know 7 a.m to 4:30 or 9 to 5 9 to 5 9 to 5 and then they have just enough energy to piss and have a meal and go back to sleep and do it all over again you know it's very it's very it's very it's a very, it's a very sick it's a very sick and corrupt system and then like once a year you have on like you know fucking holiday time there where uh, where people are allowed to drop their expected to drop their psychosis put up the mask and be all friendly and shit they're all like friendly and shit while the remaining 364 days a year they're pissing on each other so like uh, nothing really makes much sense here you know i'm convinced that we are living in clown world you know, I'm glad you brought all this stuff up because the other day I was uh, sitting down. My internet's been acting a little retarded. I wanted to, I wanted to do a video on evil. What is evil, and what you know, where where does this destructive nature come from, and so forth and so on. And then, and then tonight you get on here and you're like, you know, you're talking about what you want to talk about. I'm like, oh yeah, that's so uh, like right down the alley of where I've been for the last couple of days. Uh, I, I I want to throw out a really weird concept. So there's a so like I was talking about the black plate thing and about how we're just, you know, we're out there fishing and stuff. If you think about it, if not for the advancements of mankind, if not for mankind, their self, there would be no such thing as a fucking evil. There would be nothing you could really claim or demonize or villainize. None, none of the stuff would, would ever occur. If not for humanity's inability to just straight up be a human being, to another yeah. human being and let it go. Everything is everything. Yeah. Everything is pol Everything's fucking polarized here. So um, 
a lot. So what what you're describing is polarization in there. So what they do is they take something. They take you in norm. What what these fuckers do is they 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 want to get you in the left or right brain imbalance there. So sin, the concept of sin is the biggest is one of the biggest ones here. So anything that's like, take a look at the Jehovian monster, that that fucking god of the Abrahamic virus. It hates anything normal, anything to do with humans, you know, but expects you to love it and fear it at the same time. And then and then you get like the fucking psychotic, you know, Muslims of sex is bad. You 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 can't have it. But you can have 72 virgins in heaven. You, you, can, you can fulfill it, but you can't, you can't fulfill it here. And that really puts people in a state of mental imbalance. Mental imbalance. Or you get, like, the other side, like the fucking Sioux age, like, hippy-dippy Wicca shit, where it's all just about, like, love and light and just a spiritual escapism. Ignore the shadow. Ignore so 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 ignore the shadow or fear based modality. Fear this abusive, tyrannical, hyper masculine dominator god, or this fluffy bunny fucking spiritual escapist shit. Pick your poison. Pick any team but you. Uh, Bow down, uh, grovel before any god, but don't be your own god. Uh, I I'm going to use a. Uh uh, magical term here, uh, call it, um, make believe, pretend, all in the realm of our imagination. And what have we done with it, with that imagination, with that great untapped power and ability and capability that we all have? We're so busy, you know, sticking them in boxes, sticking them in corners, saying this is this and this is this. Nothing has allowed us to be as it is. Yeah. And to be interacted with. Instead, you've got to either, you've either got to, Master it, bash it, and rule over it, or you've got to pretend like it doesn't exist. And yeah, that, that's that's defeatism at its finest. Um, no matter which end of that spectrum you're going. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of psychosis-inducing bullshit. And that's why that's why I adore magic in general because magic is neither left nor right. It's not it's not good or evil. I ain't none of that shit, man. I mean, just we say left hand path. But we say left hand path because after a while, it's just like. Everybody's got this constituental idea of what that is, and so anything that can be packed in that corner, you know, if, if you say it's this or you say it's that, they tune out and they quit listening or something. Yeah. So you have to package it to where they fucking listen. The robot people, they want answers. They want fixed fucking answers because they got no fucking imagination. The school, they fucking killed their imagination. If you have an imagination, you're an asshole. You need to be medicated. You got ADHD. They put all these, like, fucking labels and shit on you. And they try to, like, drug, drug, drug you up and everything and suppress you. So anybody you know with, like, a creative, like, personality there is not a friend of the energy extraction treadmill system. A lot of the, a lot of the times our modern gods, our modern gods are unfriendly to the human condition. Uh, because... We, we, we sort of sound like, you know, you have a nine to five, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with first shift, second shift, third mm-hmm. shift, and such stuff, whatever your system is, or whether you're disabled, or whether it's this, whether it's that, it really doesn't matter. But but we are condensed by a time, you know, the day and night and everything else, and well, we've got to be up to take care of this, take care of that, you know, whether it's paying your bills, going to work, uh, getting food, whether it's any of these things. But what, in, in the end, what happens is that, that leeches the very the very light force out of us. That that sincere approach to it is six days a week. I mean, holy shit! I know motherfuckers that work seven days a week. I used to be one of those motherfuckers, you know. And then still have to have a magical life. Still have to have you know uh, a relationship and all this other stuff. I mean, you know, that's that that, that shit right there drains the colors the colors from us. I mean, just yes. Does. And that's the you know you know and and. They, and that's the thing about fucking, like, work and inflation, the, you know, you know, the fucking prices of everything going up, uh, you know, the, 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 the decreasing of purchasing power. They, they, they want to keep you fucking busy and busy and busy so you don't have time for yourself. You don't have time to work on your consciousness or write songs or paintings or pictures or rituals or poems or doing the shit that you're... You should be doing with your time. Yeah. Like I said, it's very, uh, uh, it's very 
on the front like towards the human condition. Yeah. Our, our, Monder- our, Mo- moderni- uh, modernity is the virus. It's completely cold and inhuman. The way I see it, uh, when the Jehovian gridworks took over the earth, when this motherfuckers gained full control there, um, everything was very monotheistic and very, very rugged. And the, we had the worst, the worst, like, fucking, like, police, Christian police states in Europe. And then we have the fucking, like, um, like the Orwell of his time, like uh, John Calvin, the Calvinists. I don't know if you heard of heard of John Calvin, but he was uh, a be- first Calvin. behaviorist. Yeah, so, like, um, it was, like, mandatory church attendance. And if you didn't go to fucking church, like, like three strikes and you're burned at the stake or exiled or whatever, and um, and and the thought police would like come in. They make sure you didn't have any idols or whatever. You didn't have any Im- graven images, and uh, for hell forbid they found something, they'd fucking burn you, you know. And that, yeah, that motherfucker, that fucking shit didn't work out. It worked for a while. But, you know, we have different currents and different energies and different intelligences um, incurring into these planes and through the inner planes. Right now, you know, we see the like the Enlightenment era was a very Luciferian time and it enabled our founding fathers to create this great experiment, this awesome experiment called America, where we can practice we can practice the arts and sciences and the face of our choice without fear of getting fucking burned. So what do they do? They bring in the iron clad. They bring in the ironclad fiat money system. Federal Reserve suck away all the fucking purchasing power, so they can't control you through church. They can fucking drain you of your time just because the treadmill's going a little bit faster, a little bit faster, and you got to work harder and harder and harder and more hours just to fucking keep up with it. Yeah, our, our new god is uh, in the color of green and about so big, you yep. know, has numbers yep. on Money. Now, yep. You know, as long as it has a one and two zeros, then, yep. you know, that's our supreme god. Yep. The one I... And I say that basically because I know that's not everybody's god, but it's the god of the world. It just runs It is, it is, it is the god of the world. King. But I also like to think that cash is the poor man's money. It, it, it is, but ultimately what it is is money isn't evil. Money is just resources. It's just energy. What the fuckers have done is they weaponized it. They weaponized resource and centralized it and made it not easy to come by so that you have to slave for it. And because of the inflation and because of the controlled cir- circulation, like half of the world's wealth is in the hands of the fucking Vatican and half of these motherfuckers' hands that um, every, everyone else... Everyone else has to fucking like slave just to have um, the bread, just bread on the table, you know. They're weaponizing our thoughts, even if yeah. it's I mean, everything, and you know, this ain't a conspiracy theory, it ain't nothing like that. There's nothing wrong with AI, same as there's nothing wrong with cash, mm-hmm. you know. But the thing is, is that when it's all targeted to influence you, yeah. Yeah, there's no, this is my mind, this is my state. So, um, I thought I'd go into real quick about how I got into these arts and sciences and a little bit about myself. Hell yeah, let's hear it. So, my name's Cody. Uh, I did not speak till I was about 4.5, 5 years old. I was diagnosed as high-functioning autistic. Asperger's syndrome. I had very, very early intervention, which enabled me to ultimately get mainstream through school. I graduated through 12th grade. I even was able to take a graphic design certificate program in 11th and 12th grade, where I'd go over to BOCES for half a day on the school bus. Then I'd come back for lunchtime, and I'd, and I'd finish up, uh, you know, like uh, probably like three or four, like, core curricular class like social studies, history, science, or whatever like that for half the day. I got a graphic design certificate. I took some, I took a machinist certificate up there, but there's really like not a lot of jobs in the area that, that I'm in. 
So I do, I do have, I do have an education, but, you know, I, my, I remember my mom used to, like, always, like, saying when she was, when I was basically handed this death sentence called the, the autism, I was like, oh, will he be able to do anything? Will he be able to drive or whatever like that? Don't expect much out of him. And then here I am, you know, I'm, um, I, I, I've had many jobs there. I also, I also sell knives, and I'm also running a channel. And uh, so I, 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 I do a lot of things with my time. But I think the main reason why and uh, how that I got into these arts and sciences is I think that they were always with me from the time I was born. I mean, I remember things that, like, most kids shouldn't be able to remember. I remember being fucking baptized by the enemy, and I was screaming and fighting and resisting all the way. And I knew that uh, I was going to be in for a hell of a ride. Um, but I was the kind of kid who could see things. Like, I wouldn't see, like, spirits or anything, but, like, um, looking out on my road, like the trees and stuff in the forest, it would look like a J.A.R. Tolkien, um, you know, like a Hobbit in the Trilogy, or it looked like a, a Hallmark card. Like everything was very magical and very like high energy. So I would see, um, I would see faces and carpet squirrels. Um, we have this weird like linoleum tile from like the 70s. It looks like a bunch of like colored like specks and everything and I would see like I would see like demons and devils and horned dragons and stuff I would see like faces in that linoleum tile you know like growing up you know you know on the floor as I was like sitting in my high chair or whatever like looking on the floor like I would see faces and things like that and basically I was just one of those one of those individuals that just basically had the occult that had this shit already born in them I didn't have a choice really like oh am i am i drawn or am i going to start doing this like i i was already fucking doing it i was already living that life without even knowing it you know and i was raised catholic i was brought up you know catholic i was dragged to church every sunday um against my will i was taught all the bullshit had the fear of hell fear of the devil uh you know a uh, fear of uh uh you know of going to hell, and I, they, the, the fuckers even convinced me that I could sin in my thoughts too, so I had thought crime. So I, there was a period of my life where Christianity almost completely ruined my life. That I was convinced yeah, that I was crime. going, that I was going to hell because I thought fuck the Holy Spirit in my thoughts. I had just committed the unpardonable sin in my thoughts. I, the sin against the Holy Spirit in my thoughts. So like I'm fucked, and. Not only that, but like opening my eyes around like 15 or 16, I started uh, reading, I um, started like questioning Christianity. And it was really, um, I have to give credit to the joy of Satan to, for really red pilling me. That and exposing Christianity.com, I read about how much bullshit it actually was. And then my eyes were opened up and I, and basically logic just did the rest. I came to the logical conclusion that I could not be a good Christian. And I never was a good Christian, even if I wanted to. This this Jehovah thing, whatever the fuck you want to call it, no matter what you do, you can never please it. It's always angry at you. It's always casting plagues and hellfire and hailstones down upon you. You can never please it. Uh, nine, 99 times out of 100, you're going to hell, even if you are like a Christian or go to church. Um, you have to be a hardcore Bible thumper and be speaking in tongues and being possessed by the Holy Spook and possessed by Jesus if you even want a chance to get to heaven. But even if you do want to get to heaven, heaven sucks anyway because it's a giant fucking cube. Golden cube like the Borg. And like, I, I started watching like YouTube videos like near death experience of like people going to heaven. It sucks. It fucking sucks. Like heaven is lame. Like, everyone's all, like, fucking these white, like, etheric robed, like, robots just endlessly chanting to the demiurge for all of eternity. And eventually, a very, very esteemed and very wise occultist confirmed this to me that heaven of the monotheistic religion basically is just a pleasurable machine, like a giant, like, computer where people are just 
just give up all their energy and lose should they just evaporate. And I'm like, so Christianity, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. There, Christianity is a lose-lose situation no matter what the fuck I did. You know, if, if I go to heaven, I lose. If I go to hell, I lose. There's no way I can fucking win with it. So I'm like, fuck this. This is a fucking fail, fail, lose, lose system. I'm doing something else. And I, you know, I read H.P. Lovecraft. I, I read, you know, I read the occult. Like, fuck, I played a lot of occult video games, like Return to Castle Wolfenstein and like Doom 3 and all these like shooters and stuff where you're shooting up like monsters and things like that. Most players would like clear the room and move on to the next part of the map. I wouldn't. I would I would stand by and like look at the swastika banners on the on the wall and all like the Nazi symbols and there are some parts of the game where there is actually like Nazi occult rituals and there is like singles and things like scrawled out on the floor and I would stop by and I would look at those symbols and everything like that and I'd study them for a minute even though I was still supposedly like Christian this was probably when I was like 13 or 14 years old at a time, so like I had this, it was it was a long way coming. It was really like a long way coming, uh, and I'm almost v very certain too that I I used to astral project a lot. Like I would leave my body very often um, as as a youngin, and I would wake up. I would wake up like I had an episode. I'd wake up like on the side of the bed and I'd be all like wrapped, the blanket would be like wrapped around my arm, whatever, and the pillow would be between my legs and everything. So, yeah, like, I used to astral project and, like, uh, just have those astral flights or whatever like that when I was a very, very young child. And then, like, you know, it's just, I was just one of those souls that had the magic, magic within them. There was no, there was no not doing magic. Even if I didn't want to, it's like, you're fucking magical whether you like it or not. <laughs> I despise religion, and probably good. I probably got a little bit of heat from it. Probably get more. I don't know. I don't really care. But I despise religion, and here's why: every single religion ever created, ever made, I don't care what the intention was behind it, all leads to being subservient and weak. And here's what I mean by weak: if you do not agree with not go along with if that's not your cup of tea if you if you disagree with it in any way you're you're out you yeah. know that's just that there's no not, there's no room for questioning kids club. yeah you're out of the cool kids club you ain't allowed to hang out with the adults it's all shut up sit in the back just keep quiet yeah. uh, stuff like that uh you even in this modern age we're having to be so careful even in the magical uh the, the magical community uh, that are going around and stuff. You know, we're, what we're trying to build is something where it's free thinking, free existence, free being, and so forth and so on. And if we're not conscious, if we're not careful with it, we find ourselves, you know, like, not necessarily, oh, if you disagree with me, but like, you know, if all of a sudden you go, you know, if somebody has a subservient thought that goes against you, you know, once again, what's happening is, you know, oh, no, 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 you're, you're not a us, blah, 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 put it out to the side. And this has left some people feeling justified for being, uh, for, for being that way, for being, because sometimes you have dicks and groups who, no matter what group you're talking about, no matter whether it isn't about being subservient or any of other shit, it, it would be a truly open-minded group. You're always going to run across people who've got to be different for the sake of being different. You know what I'm saying? They've got to start shit just to start shit. And so that's not exactly what I'm referring to when I'm talking about being a free thinker. Okay, but like we have to be so careful with this with the shit that's going around that we're doing now. Is I mean, what are we doing? Are we reinventing a new religion, or are we actually uh, promoting uh, humani humanitarianism in the sense of Lucifer being the rebel, being the one that broke us free from these chains, this binding, this bondage? And why the fuck will we go and tie ourselves and chain ourselves the fuck back up? Yeah, you know. That makes no sense why you would do, why, what, for what? Okay, you just, you, you reinvented the wheel, congratulations, it's still a fucking wheel. Yeah. You know, no matter how you look at it. Uh, I wanted to come back to something you were talking about, you were talking about your childhood and coming up, because, uh, I think it's very important to point this out, you know, you were talking about, you know, 
being born and, and with, with autism. Mm-hmm. And, and there are different levels on that, on the scale of autism. I mean, I've, I've seen it from, uh, I've seen the worst case scenarios, which is, you know, they really have no control over their mind or their body's reactions, all the way to high function autism. And, 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 and for some reason, I noticed a similarity that there is, there, anything of an intellectual, intelligent nature catches those with autism's attention. For whatever reason, they're better at, at discerning puzzles. They're, they're easy, it's easier for them to, to break it down. Now, now, the tools that they have to use are a little bit different than normal people. I mean, you know, like, for example, you know how you were talking about how you had to apply logic? Yeah. Okay, well, that, that, is one, that is one of the major tools that you have in your arsenal. But also, and I imagine that as long as you've been doing this, I imagine that you've also realized that there's a different element or a different component besides just logic. That there's a sense of knowing, and that sense of knowing, sometimes you can't explain it or define it. Uh, you got any experiences like that? Oh, yeah, where you just know something... Or you feel like drawn, you feel like drawn, you can't explain why. Yeah, and uh, logic, no reason to thought can, can help you understand why. Yeah. I mean, I just, I guess, uh, the main example that, like, I, I can cite is, like, I'm very, like, big about horned animals and, like, goats and sheep and things like that. Um, there, there's this, like, taxidermy like deer thing so I'm like yeah um this 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 is from a friend of my father's there I was he used to take me to his like man cave and I was like a little kid and he said I would like stare at that thing for like hours like I like I liked it I really liked it and he didn't even know where he got it or anything like that but he almost gave it to me then so um and then I see him, I see him recently, I ask him about it, and he's like, well, I don't know where I got it from, you can have it. So he just straight up gives it to me. Real. So, yeah, like this is this weird shit that like didn't make like no sense. Like this is going to sound like really, really, this is going to sound like really, really lame or really stupid, but here it goes. Like I did not like to look at the, at, at the, at the fixture of the hand railing at the end of the hallway because it looked like a, it looked like a face. It looked like an insectoid face or something like that because it had flat head screws and it looked like slanted eyes. So like it looked like an entity was like staring at me from the end of the hall. So I did not like that face and like just like weird things like that. And then I had like this thing about like the letter Y like I had to have it but there's actually a rune. There's actually like a rune that looks like this. So just there's a couple things, a couple like things I had to have or things that like I tried to avoid that like really did not make much sense. You know, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, but that comes with it, you know. And I think with like Asperger's autism, it amplifies, it it amplifies this stuff. It definitely amplifies it. I used to not... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um... All I know is that, like, I've come, i come a long way. I'm able to do a lot of things now, and I've done some things that, like, even, like, neurotypical, like the normies who don't have any problem, they, they, they won't accomplish, you know. And um, I used to not have a whole lot of good way to express myself. So, like, I wouldn't, like, talk. And then, like, growing up there, I'd have these huge, like, tantrums. Like, I was one of those violent autistic children that would punch themselves, hit themselves, hit, like, the wall or kick, like, or kick, like, um, the stair rail or something like that or whatever like that because they couldn't express themselves. So I was a lot worse. I was, I was more autistic. I was, like, moderately autistic. And now I'm, like, now, like, uh, low to mild autistic. Well, it's because you've come to terms with yourself and understanding what makes you different from others. But I was going to ask you, uh, how do emotions vary though with you versus uh, uh, why do I use your word uh, a normal? What what is the difference emotionally? Because from what I do understand it from my own personal experience, 
terms of working with autistic uh, uh, individuals, uh, emotions are a lot. They're they're, they're a lot more. Uh, they're they're stronger. Not necessarily more developed, but they're definitely stronger because uh, of an inability to express. And so, how does that affect you? I tend, I, I only know from my personal experience, I've, I only know this lifetime, even though, you know, I am certain, you know, I, I am certain of like reincarnation and that where we're the, we've lived other lifetimes and we're the sum of all those experiences there. I can't, I can't compare myself to others because I don't know what they're like. I don't, I don't know how normies have emotions. I don't know what they feel. I never felt what they felt. I never, you know, uh, seen what they seen I never thought what they thought but what I can tell you is I still have some degree of difficulty there so I think what's allowed me to get this far is actually the ritual chamber there and my magic's very cathartic um, you know I scream I make loud I make proclamations statements or I get something off my chest so uh, ritual is a very good thing for me it, 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 he, it's very healing and allows me to get some of this blow off some steam blow off some steam if you will and I'm the kind of guy who just like you know I I'm not necessarily ruled by my emotions but I do let my emotions I let shit fester in like a pressure cooker almost to the point where it can cause problems and then I just explode into one like huge like hydrogen bomb in the fucking megatons like watch the fuck out because my 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 purges are when I when I purge in the ritual chamber I fucking purge like I fucking let it all out when I when I would when I would I rather do I want to have these more like smaller like medium sized purges like more often. Oh yeah, I uh, I I grew up uh, I had a wide range of uh, social interactions with people. Uh, I grew up uh, in uh, Boy Scouts and in certain organizations and stuff, and uh, uh, so I've been I've been able to be involved in different organizations, different groups, but helping different types of individuals, and people throughout my life. Um, one thing I could never I could never understand about uh, the way the way people with autism or special needs were treated was the fact that they were looked down as if they were as if they were yeah. unintelligent because that's not true. They're very intelligent. No, very uh, intelligent. We just don't we don't act like it. We don't we don't no, talk no. like we yeah, don't always talk they, like you know, it or show it, but yeah. It it is it is it is a fucking form of discrimination. It is like ableism and you know, the main thing that I had to blame it on is just ignorance is that you know, fucking autism is looked upon almost like a disease. It's almost looked upon like leprosy or AIDS. Like if you have autism, uh, you're 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 somehow a threat, or you're you're somehow an asshole. You know, and fucking like organizations that are pretending to like do shit about it, like Autism Speaks, is fucking making the problem worse because it's not a fucking disease. Autism is not a fucking disability or anything that's. It's, it's it, it is not a fucking cancer. Autism is just a different. It's just a different fucking. Uh, it's a different modality of consciousness, and it's not just autistic or ADHD. You see, there's there's different ways of learning too. Because like some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners, some people are more like a primal, intuitive, spiritual learners. So there are many different modes of consciousness, and there's many different fucking uh, presets. Um, I hate to use video game terms, but like you could call them loadouts. So people have different loadouts, different abilities, and different skill sets on there. So rather than treating like somebody with a different loadout like a fucking problem, like a fucking disease, it's not a fucking disease. It's not a problem. We should embrace this. You know, if we still had it, like, back in the fucking, back back when we still had this shit, if we still had it, I probably would have got, like, trained by, like, um, I probably would have got trained by, like, um, the, the chief of the tribe there, 
You know, I probably would have got like spiritual special training or something like that. But we don't have that shit now. You know, you need to no, sign your kids no, different. No, you got to drug them up. You got to drug them no. up, and it pisses it pisses me off because I know I'm fucking different. I don't know what it's like to be a normie. So you know, don't no, ask me no. don't ask me what it's like to be autistic because I can't tell you because like no. it's like an isolate thing. Something can only know itself there. But what I can tell you is my personal experience and like. My personal, like, how I do things and stuff like that, how I, like, think, how I process things. I, I could have done a better job of wording that question. Oh, I no, it's, it's, it's cool. I'm not, I'm not ranting at you. I don't want you to think that I'm ranting at you or anything like that. I'm passionate about this shit. I fucking hate, uh, I fucking hate that, like, autistic and, like, Asperger people are looked down upon. And, like... Uh, the reason why, like, for this, and, like, the flapping, and, like, the ticks and things, why they're punching the walls, because they got too much energy, they don't know how to express themselves, we need to be getting, we need early intervention, more early intervention, we need to find out who these gift, who these differently abled, different loadout individuals are, so we can give them the tools and shit that they need to express themselves. So that they can so so they so that they can go up so they can live up to their potential. Well, uh, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Uh, I think a few things I wanna say, but I'm gonna say this right off the bat. Uh, for modality, you may be considered autistic, uh, but for me, me personally, you're Cody. Yeah. You're my friend, my brother. Uh, the rest of that dude, that's whatever the hell that is. I don't know. I'm just wailing. I have a lot of my own weird tics and things, and fuck the classification, brother. You know, classification is for people who need them. That's... Uh, I personally don't. I think the labels, labels are probably the worst thing that was ever created. Uh, once again, that's the people who need recognition, who need some kind of feel special or something. I have no idea what that's about. Um, but... The, what, the way I probably should have ordered that a little bit better, and I'm going to go ahead and put that out there like that, is from what you see. Not, not necessarily yeah. what you consider a normal person, but come from your point of view of who you are and what you deal with. And then think of people that you've seen out in public or people that you run into every now and then, you know, whether it's on here or whether it's out in real life or whatever. You know, how, how, do, you see, how do you see the way you react, you act, opposed to the way they do? With, with certain subjects or things of emotional nature come up, and that's all I meant by that. Cool. Um, and, and just so you know, you do do not ever feel like you have to walk on eggshells or like um, or like uh, or blind uh, or blind uh, or blind, you blind your questions you with me. You can. There's no barriers. You can say anything you want. Um, you can you can ask me anything you want. Um, but I as as you could see earlier, I wasn't. I wasn't reacting at you. I, I'm passionate. I'm passionate about this shit, and there's a lot of stuff that I could say. I'm glad you lot, lot of stuff I could say, but I know I have my own quirks too. Uh, they're like um, I'm actually I might be kind of a reactive guy. I, I do say things and react to situations before putting a whole lot of thought into it. Um, if that makes any sense, my mom calls me the bull in the china shop. You know. Again with the goat, the, the goat horns here. I just when I decide to do something, I I go out and I fucking do it. I fucking I commit to action. I think that it's sad that you or anybody with any kind of different modality has to or feels as if they have to defend themselves for being who and what they are, the way they are, because that's just fucking bullshit straight yeah. up. Um, as far as like walking around you with eggshells, I'm sorry, I've only got one mode, and that's Wayland mode. And that just that is what that is. And you know, that's all I fine. want. Then, 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 then you, then you do that. You be Wayland, and I'll be Cody. I that want, works. I want you, I want you to be yourself around me. Um, so, <laughs> and what you said about labels there, I think that the whole autistic spectrum thing is like, it's bullshit. Like, yeah, there, there, there are people who have attention deficits. But think about it, though. We put kids in classrooms for like six hours a day. We expect them to 
fucking sit still while meanwhile while we drill in the head about how big of an asshole their ancestors are or how they're the asshole because they're white or something like that and how and how they need to believe in something called authority and they need to not ask questions. Well questions are encouraged as long as they're controlled, but if you ask a question outside of the box there, well you're 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 an asshole or you need to be medicated or something like that. And what I think about the fucking autism, Asperger, ADHD thing is what comes to mind is the KGB in the Soviet Union when the Soviet regime wanted to suppress um, the, the people. It, it was a communist Orwellian police state. Any political opponent who did not foot the bill who did not, you know, toe the line and fit the box and be a good slave, be a good little communist Soviet slave. They they were put in they they were put in prisons. They're in prison in mental institutions or or hospital prisons under the guise of mental hospitals and mental health. Or they just get straight to the and then most times out of ten they they die in those places or get sent off to the gulag. So that's where I think the, as from a like conspiracy theory, not like a theory, but from a conspiracy reality, that's why I think the whole like, um, the whole uh, fetish, the whole urge to just label everybody and just fucking put a stamp on everyone's fucking head. This person's autistic, this person's Asperger, this person's ADHD, this person's this, this person that is 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 basically like is basically like the golden star. You know, um, um, in you, you know, in uh, 1940s Germany, or in like in in Soviet, um, you know, uh, communist Russia and these regimes, it's very, very dangerous. This fucking, this fucking uh, quest to uh, to basically quantify everybody by giving them a fucking label or giving them a limit, or giving them a name, you know, just because they're different or something. Fuck that. I'm going to turn off my video because your uh, video isn't connecting. We can just go to audio call. You're very distorted, but I, I don't I don't hear you now. It says connecting video. Connection status is poor. Yeah, connection status is poor. Shit. Yeah, I... I don't hear anything. I'm going to call you back. Is that okay? I'm going to call you back.
call dropped, and he's not reachable now because of fucking shitty internet connection. And I have to end this and do a part two. So the last part where I was saying is that um, the whole name labeling shit where this person's Asperger's, this person's ADHD, that started out with the communist um, in Soviet Russia with that uh, horribly oppressive regime where anyone who wasn't a good, wasn't a thought of the state, wasn't a friend of the state, basically thought criminals, they'd be locked up in prison in the guise of mental hospitals or gulagged or killed or whatever like that. And I just see that's a very dangerous trend um, happening, you know, with the more invasive um, child psychiatry, you know, putting kids on drugs and shit like that. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not just in the, uh, in, in foreign countries, it's in the ordinary states. Yeah. Fuck that. That's not cool. Because there were a lot of people, uh, back in the, uh, 1920, on up till the 60s and 70s even, who, when they couldn't have them, they didn't have a classification for them. Yeah. But literally, you want to have them, uh, Yeah, yeah. They couldn't. They couldn't fit the robot. They couldn't fit the robot society small niche. So fuck them, you know. Throw them under the bus. Well, but sometimes yeah. it wasn't always like that. Yeah. Like, there were people with physical. Right. Uh, special physical needs. Yeah. You know? And they were just all lumped together with. Uh, yeah. With Another conspiracy rat rabbit hole, you could take that even further, uh, the work of Michael Tassarion. He has an entire uh, uh, has an entire podcast called Inquisitions Old and New, and basically we've never, the, the, the Inquisitions never stopped. Instead of like burning people at the stake, now they just electrocute your brain, electroshock, and put you in a padded cell instead of the torture dungeon. So you might want to check that out. I'll send it to you after um, this call. But one of the biggest things uh, why, 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 I'm, why we're having this discussion tonight, what I wanted to ask you about, uh, I've been saving it up, saving the best for last up to this point here, and then I'll let you go, is when we were talking, like, not last week but the other week, it was that uh, it was me, Joseph, yourself, and Ryan Sterner, it was a good, like, two-hour thing. It was a good potential video, but I didn't record it. Um, and it was, um, we you, we were all talking. We were all read. Ryan was, like, reading from Lieber Falsifer 3. I was reading something. You were sharing something. Um, and one of the things that you shared, um, I don't know if it was your own gnosis or you're, like, reading this from a book or something, but um, it, it sounded like it was from Lieber Falsifer. Um uh, you, you describe like a type of being or like a type of soul who's forever stuck. They have one foot, not like stuck, but it's like it's like they have one foot in this world and one foot in the spirit world at all times. Yeah, those are called uh, uh, different traditions have my different things. And Lord, I wish I owned a copy of Lieber Fox, but I want all three of those books so bad. But uh, no. Uh, Sometimes they're known as nexus of power, and these are people who stand eternally at that threshold between the waking and the dreaming. Um, this, this, this is, you, anybody can be brought to that level. I'll say anybody can. I'm not going to say that there are cases where it can't uh, occur or happen. But basically, it's just building the, the mental acuity and skill to be able to do so. And then the discipline of holding yourself in that state of being 
but there are naturally some people who are neither uh, what I refer to as dead nor alive. They're in that they're in that period in between. And a lot of the times they have uh, they have more issues, more problems than, than normal people because they don't necessarily feel connected to the living, and yet at the same time they're not exactly pure of spirit either. And these these types sometimes they occur naturally, and you have to be able to watch for signs of these types mm. of individuals. You know, kind of like uh, you know how you were talking earlier about how you know autism is caught soon enough. You know, a lot more can be can be done to to aid that individual. Well, the same thing goes with these types of individuals. Uh, so forth and so on. Sometimes uh, sometimes uh, what 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 is the word? Oh, well, fuck is not the word, but um, <laughs> um, severe trauma, like PTSD type stuff, can cause it, uh, mm. but not on the not on the positive end of the spectrum. And when I say positive end, I'm talking about uh, where it's a tool that you can use, uh, sometimes out of our control. That makes any sense. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. The reason why I ask is I think I might be one of those in-betweeners. I don't think not at the extreme where, I mean, I know I'm alive. I don't feel like I'm not alive, but I do have a multidimensional life. Like, I'll give you an example. Like, most kids, they should just be able to put their, put their coat on or whatever and get out for the bus for school or whatever, get ready for school in the morning. I could never do that. Every, I was, I was a slow kid. Um, everything would take extra time with, with me. Like, I couldn't just put socks and shoes on. It would take me five to ten fucking minutes to put socks and shoes on because I get the sock, like, oh, I get one of my toes in, and then, like, I would just get hit with all this stuff on, like, the etheric and, like, mental planes. I'd be entering stargates. I'd be, I'd be having conversations with myself or having conversations with elementals and, like, different entities and stuff like that. And my mind would just be in all these other, like, ten other places at once. So putting my socks and shoes on, I had to put a lot of extra effort, and I was able to cut it down to, like, a minute, but or, like, less. Now, now, now I can do it, like, 30 seconds, but, like, it used to take me a long time to do, like, mundane tasks because... I'd be getting hit with all this other shit, or I'd be riding on the bus or whatever, or be walking down the street, and while I'm entering stargates or fucking having conversations with spirits or whatever, like, I literally, I have one foot in this world, and I have one foot in the, in, in the inner planes. Oh, what, uh, a strange coincidence that I've seen with individuals like this, or, uh, People like myself who uh, <laughs> died and came back, <laughs> and uh, I'm not gonna say that there's a limit. And I'm not, and I've said it before, but I'm not saying go out there and haunt yourself and <laughs> try to bring yourself back to develop it. But I have noticed that a few, uh, a few individuals who have uh, died and come back, uh, all uh, completely changed and altered, in really, really strange ways. Uh, I have I have no doubt when you say something like that that you might be that you feel as if you might be one of those people. I have no doubt of that. Whether it's from you know a trauma or whether it's from you know just the way you were born or whatever. Uh, and the reason why I don't doubt it is because the words coming out of a person's mouth speaks volumes to the perspective that they had in general. And so when you have a broader, wide range perspective, it shows in what you say and how you say things. And that's usually a really good example of how you can tell how far along down the road somebody is, uh, spiritually speaking. Uh, and, uh, like a spiritual evolutional kind of, kind of sense. And so I can see that with you. Uh, however, I myself, I don't, I don't feel as if it's something that, uh, uh I can never explain it. And I can never, you know, fully break it down. Uh, but that being in between stage, sometimes it really sucks. Yeah. Uh, because you're, you're open to see things that you don't want to see or that you don't care to know. And then at times it's not there when you need it the most. Right. So I don't, I don't have hallucinations. It's not like that bad. But my imagination and my thoughts are, 
amplified. So you could say that my thoughts are pro my internal dialogue is louder than most people. So I live in my head a lot of the time, and I would grow up there. And it still happens to me right now. I, I'm a lot more grounded than I was before. Um, I lived entirely, completely internally. I lived completely internally for the first, like, ten years of my life. And hit my teens, I'm starting to come out. In my 20s, I'm, like, um, like probably, like, maybe 60 to 70%. No, I'm probably, like, I live, like, 60%, like, in the world. And I'm still, like, a solid, like, 40% like live in internally and this really sucks too because what 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 sucks about it but what's also very empowering about it is like I got to like watch myself and remember to like drink water and stuff like that because I skipped entire meals and things like that just working on uh, on what I want to think about or work on or whatever like that I've forgotten entire meals I forgotten I've forgotten to uh drink water and stuff like that so I gotta actively remind myself to do those things but because I'm so close to the astral plane I'm so like close to like the spiritual I have a lot of fucking magic my my moon is in Leo so I have a lot of fucking magic I have a lot of like access to to the astral and I get like gnosis like like I get those gnosis bombs those gnosis um, when those bombs, they drop on me, they dawn on me, it fucking, t the process fucking takes me on for a ride. You know, until I, like, fucking ground it. So how I usually deal with this, like, I have to ground constantly. I have to ground a lot. And I have to speak a lot, too, because it's a moving current within me. That's why I have, like, these fucking, why I have these, like, four-hour-long six hour long videos on my channel because I have to get it the fuck out or else it'll build up and it'll build up and it'll build up. I gotta like, I gotta let the steam, I gotta let the pressure go. That's why I can like read entire like books and things like that too is because I have the endurance and the energy. Like I can read like, uh, you know, these, these like books and things like that on my channel and I'm not even drained at all. Um, I've, I've been told that, like, the hand flapping and shit is actually because I have so much energy, so I need to get rid of all this extra energy, and that I should be a lot better, a lot better off once I get this energy, almost like as a way of grounding it. Oh, hell yeah, dude. It's not, yeah, it's not all spiritual escapism. It's not all about the material plane either. Um, you just got to work with, you got to juggle both, and then you'll end up improving and expanding in both empires. Yep. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, so creative outlets, creative expression is a big fucking thing for me, and I think once I've got that, once I got that down or like that, I'm going to be a lot better, a lot better off right there. But basically, yeah, that's all, that's all I really wanted to ask you about there is because what, what, the, what you were saying about that made so much fucking sense. I'm like, I identify with that. Like, I have a foot in both worlds. Like, it's, 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 it's fucking crazy, you know, like having a conversation like sometimes I had I've had times where I'm trying to hold a normal conversation with a person about mundane bullshit and I'm having like two other conversations in the fucking background internal dialogues of like different archetypes or Jungian shit or spirits or whatever like that like I'm very like scattered brain too and that's why I can never like hold like a linear video from point A to B I gotta go to like A to D or F, G, and then back to C, B, and then like over to K, and then and then over all the way to Z. So like, I don't I don't think linearly either. 
I don't know if that, like, makes any sense. Like, I have internal dialogue, but, like, I also think in pictures, too. So I'm a, both a visual and auditory person. I have the inter internal dialogue, but I also have internal landscapes, too. Anytime you want to do this, we can do we can do more of these um, short um, annexes. There, just let me know. Oh hell yeah, brother! Thanks. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for taking some of your time with me today. Um, thank you so much, and you have a killer evening <laughs> or morning. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. I appreciate it, brother. All right. Later. Sixes. Uh, later.